from inside Ralph Engelstead Arena, it's time for North Dakota Hockey with Brad Berry. I'm your host, Dan Hammer. On tonight's show, we'll review North Dakota's win over Manitoba in its exhibition opener. The coach is with us in seconds to take a look at the highlights. Also tonight, we'll take a look at one of the core leadership groups of this year's team, the five returning defensemen, and we'll look ahead at the regular season openers at the Icebreaker Invitational in Maine. North Dakota defeated Manitoba 8-3 last Saturday night to open the curtain on the new season. Coach, good to be back with you again. Uh, as you reflect on Saturday night, what are some of your impressions overall? Well, I thought for sure uh, our compete level was ultra high. I thought our guys had a lot of intensity going in. They were, they were waiting for this day to, to come. Uh, I know it's been a long six weeks since they came here uh, at the end of August and they were excited about getting to play. Uh, execution was a little rusty early, but I thought it got better as the game went on. And uh, again, pretty happy with what we did. Obviously got a lot of things to work on uh, the week ahead here. Well, as you went into that game, you knew there would be some rust to knock off initially. Yep, uh, rust to knock off, and then you're putting uh, 10 new guys in a new spot. So, uh, so again, new roles, new positions, and uh, a new team, a new structure. So a lot of things coming at you. But I, you know, like I said, overall, pretty happy about what happened. Uh, again, a lot of stuff to work on this week that we're going to get to. Did you feel you got a good piece of evaluation on tape that you can take a look at here as you move forward? Yeah, absolutely. You know, obviously, we're pretty limited on what we could work on through the first course, first two weeks of play uh, right. in practice. And uh, you know, guys executed relatively well, considering. Uh, but again, like I said, uh, really happy with the experienced guys we got. We got a great group of experienced uh, veterans back, and then plus the infusion of a lot of new New young faces in our lineup uh, should be a good year. Your team generated a lot of offense. We'll take a look at the highlights coming up next on North Dakota Hockey with Brad Berry. North Dakota Hockey with Brad Berry on Midco Sports Network is presented by RydellCars.com, Sue Shop at Ralph Ingolstadt Arena, and Hot Spring Spas and Pool Tables too. It has become tradition for UND to open the exhibition season against Manitoba, as you did coach on Saturday night. Let's take a look at what were your personal emotions, Brad, as your first game on the bench as head coach? Well, you know what? Obviously running the uh, the forward side of the bench now a little bit different, but that guy right beside me there, Matt Shaw, a lot of experience to help me out through the first game here. And uh, again, I thought it went pretty well. Well, despite Manitoba getting the first goal of the game, you were generating a lot of offense early and quality chances. Yeah, very much so. Uh, you know, we didn't uh, get the back of the net a few times early and it was a little bit of frustrating but the guys stuck with the game plan of, of playing fast getting shots to the net and uh, they did a good job of uh, getting to the net after a while. Nick Schmaltz centered a couple of freshmen Brock Besser and Joel Janitwini. What did you think of that line overall? I thought they were good. I thought they tried to create plays in tight spaces. They did the right things uh, protected the puck pretty well uh, and uh, they got a lot of opportunities early. Your opening goal and it's all set up with Keaton Thompson's pass off the glass here and setting up a 2 on one. Yeah you know what he made a great play. He knew he didn't have anything uh, a direct outlet he put it off the wall and that's what we tell our guys put it off the glass skate into uh, open areas and uh, when you give it to a guy like Brock Besser he doesn't oh. he doesn't miss the net very often and as you can tell right there he capitalized my goodness he has a shot yeah he does that's a that's a strength of his for sure well uh, no doubt about it one one after one on Saturday night second period and Besser is going to start a play here now on the far wall that'll end up uh, on a two on one Nick Schmaltz is going to start up here after this play right here by yeah. Besser yeah, you know what? Great job of uh, deep defensive zone coverage that goes out into entry, attack entry there. And uh, again, you can see Gersich opening up for the two on one play. And, uh, and Nick, he has great hands. He made that play, and good players do that. Yeah, without a doubt, Nick really gets Luke Paulson to bite here, the Manitoba defenseman, for setting up Gersich. Yeah, he makes him make the first move, and he, uh, he executed well. And again, Shane uh, finished the play. Yeah, and then, bam, bam, just 12 seconds later after this goal. Immediately after the faceoff, Gersich goes to the corner, then goes to the net, and Troy Stetcher spots him there. Yeah, and again, you can see the goal happening here, but it happened way ahead of that. Uh, we, we lost the draw, but we went on 2-1-2 two -two pressure on a faceoff, and we made them turn the puck over. So again, it was off the faceoff, five guys doing the execution on All that. All right, so you're rolling now in the second period. Johnny Simonson, his sophomore season. You know, one thing about Johnny, well, even back in his USHL days, even though he's a little undersized, he likes going to the paint. Yes, he does. He really does. He plays the game the right way. Uh, he, he play, not only plays in the game, but in practice. It starts early in the work week, and he, he did a great job for us on uh, Saturday night. How about that one, Brad, between the legs? Yep, that's uh, not many players can do that, and obviously he executed. 
So uh, five unanswered goals here in the second period. Drake Kajula here creating his own opportunity. Yeah, you know what? Again, coming from defensive zone coverage, yeah. and then we bust out into entry, and uh, again, he made a great shot to, uh, to score another goal. Yeah, he's not going to miss many chances like that. No, he scored a lot the last few years uh, that way. 6-2 after two periods. All right, your new look power play. What would you think of it overall? on Saturday night. Well, you know what, again, uh, different spots for guys. I thought early on uh, uh, execution was a little bit uh, not as sharp, but I thought mm -hmm. it got better as the game went on. And again, uh, the biggest thing is having net front coverage as far as having that guy in the eyes. And we scored a goal just because uh, we took the goal tender's eyes away there. So 7-2 with that power play goal and uh, three guys on top, one deep slot player and uh, another slot player, so that's kind of your new look uh, with the power play this year. Faceoffs were dominant, and it would lead to uh, Johnny Simonson wrapping up the hat trick. Here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, anytime you can start with a puck, you have a good chance for opportunities to get pucks to the net, and again, uh, we did a good job in the, in the faceoff dot this, this game. You created 56 shots on goal through 60 minutes of uh, playing time on Saturday night in an 8-3 final in the 60 minutes of hockey. And then, because of the new overtime rule changes in the NCHC this year, you got a chance for a dry run through of the three on three overtime session. What were some of your overall impressions as we got a look at that, Brad? Well, I thought on the three on three, something that we worked on in practice a little bit, but not so much in a game. Obviously, our first time here, and I thought our guys did a pretty good job. The biggest thing that we were trying to tell them was don't give up the puck. Don't give up the puck. If you're getting tired, hang on to the puck. Try to uh, get time and space, let a couple guys change, and, and, and preserve the puck possession. Uh, ended up scoring a goal on it on Nick Schmaltz. Uh, after a line change, he held onto the puck and took it to the net. So again, keeping the puck. Well, uh, one thing we did notice, uh, if you're not possessing the puck, you're going to have a tough time getting off the ice, and your legs are going to wear down. Well, they are. Again, you'll be chasing all night. And again, once the other team has the puck, it's so tough to get back. So again, we want to keep that puck, make sure that we're always fresh. we got a lot of good players that can play those situations, so we want to make sure that we get them all out there. Do you like two forwards and a defenseman, or will you play that by ear here as well, you analyze You know what? I, I think, like I said earlier in the year, we have a lot of depth at all positions. And, right. and uh, sometimes, typically, if you're... You have overabundance of depth at one. You might want to throw all those guys out there, but I think we got really good defensemen. We got really good forwards, right. so we kind of split it up a little bit there. So it's two and one, and that's what we're going with. All right, a successful exhibition opener, and yet to come here on tonight's show, we'll take a look at the five returning defensemen. They're a big part of this hockey. North Dakota Hockey with Brad Berry on Midco Sports Network is presented by RydellCars.com, Sue Shop at Ralph Ingolstadt Arena, and Hot Spring Spas and Pool Tables too. Welcome back. Coach, you and your staff have a lot of gifted defensemen, and really they are the core of the hockey team. Let's hear from them. I think the defensemen um, going into the game are going to set the tone for the team. UND's five returning defensemen have unique individual skill sets. Together, they form the core of this year's team. Gage Osmus, Paul Ledoux, Troy Stetcher, Tucker Poolman, and Keaton Thompson. Arguably, the finest set of defensemen in the NCHC. I think you got everything. Um, you got guys that can play defense really well. Trying to make his way to the net. Took a hit from Troy Stetchers. You got guys that are going to contribute on offense as well. We can play with anyone. It doesn't matter the pairings. It's we got so much chemistry back there that makes the game easy. We have a good mix back there that can. Uh, Help our team uh, do whatever needs to be done uh, that shift or that time of the game. Cameron Easy into the circle. That shot is blocked by Osmus. Osmus, the team captain, is the most defensive minded. At 6'2 and 220 pounds, he's a bull on the ice. A prototypical stay at home D man. He's our captain for a reason. He's a leader on the back end, leader for a hockey team. Um, plays the game the hard way. Uh, not a lot of players want to do that. Block shots, kills penalties, hits guys. The crowd's into it. 
Stetcher got a piece of it. He's feeling that. His teammates say Stetcher is the unit's biggest shutdown guy. He's one of the smallest guys on our D-course, but he, he battles just as hard as anyone. He gets, you know, he wins those battles in the corners just as much as, you know, the, our big D do. Poolman was moved to forward for a good part of last year. This season, he returns to the blue line full time to his most natural position. It was good too. I learned a lot about the game, and I was, you know, I still played a lot and learned a lot of things. Um, but going back to my natural position, I'm definitely excited to do that too. Uh, obviously, he's got a cannon back there. I like, uh, I like feeding that one timer over to him. But he's, you know, he's one of the most athletic guys back there. He's fast. He's you know, he's strong. And Ledoux is a preseason All-American, back for his junior season after considering offers from L.A. to turn pro. He's rated the Kings' third best defensive prospect. Arguably the best defenseman in college hockey. Um, brings something every night. He's an all-around good player, plays power play penalty kill, last minute of the game. Um, I just think he's so reliable. And Thompson, who doesn't get as many headlines as the others, but who is gifted offensively and continues to improve defensively. Coming in, I think his his biggest uh, his biggest hole in his game, I think, was uh, his defensive area. But I think coming in, he's matured and he's uh, he's a lot stronger on defense. But uh, his offensive game is really well. For as much as they do in the defensive end, it's their offensive mindset that makes them stand apart. A year ago, UND's D men led the nation in goals and scoring. The second straight year, they've been the most productive unit in the country. Obviously, we've had good, great numbers our last two years, being one of the highest scoring, and we want to keep that going. We, we uh, you know, we stress, or our coach is stressed on joining the rush and uh, contributing to that offense, and uh, you know, we plan on doing that. The bond among the returning defensemen extends well beyond the ice. Four of them, Stetcher, Ledoux, Thompson, and Osmus, came to UND at the same time. They are roommates, best friends, with similar goals. We know we come in the rink, we know we're good hockey players, but we push each other to be better. We push each other for ice time, and you know, ultimately that makes our hockey team better. It's a tight-knit group, and we always have been the last two years. I mean, our decor is, you know, it's been a great group of guys, and I couldn't be more excited to work with them again. I think we're going to be the deciding factor of uh, whether we win games or not, I think it's, it all depends on how we play and uh, how we contribute to the team. As we just saw, four of the five returning defensemen are juniors. They arrived, Brad, the same year that you came back to UND. Talk about your bond and your linkage to those set of five returning defensemen. Well, they're, they're a special group. And again, any time that you bring in that number of defensemen uh, in one time in, in that one year, it, it sometimes is a little bit of a challenge. But with those guys, they got great personalities. Uh, they got great ability. And again, th they have a bond together like, like no one has. They, they hang together all the time. And it was a pleasure working with those guys. Mm -hmm. um, and again, like I said, they work hard every day on the ice, which you want. Paul Ledoux just uh, told us that uh, it wouldn't matter the pairings. They're comfortable with each other, yeah. no matter who it is. You believe that? Absolutely. You yeah. know, and again, it's not only on the, on the ice, but off the ice. They, uh, they hang around together. They, they bond together. And uh, uh, it's a great group to work with. And each one of them brings something different to the table. So yeah. again, like I said, it's, it's great to have a group like that. You probably wouldn't trade your set of defensemen for any in the league, I'm assuming. Never, ever. Yeah. Never, ever. All right. Coming up yet here on the show, we'll hear from Shane Gersich, one of 11 North Dakota freshmen, and we'll preview UND's regular season opener. North Dakota Hockey with Brad Berry on Midco Sports Network is presented by RydellCars.com, Sue Shop at Ralph Ingolstadt Arena, and Hot Spring Spas and Pool Tables too. It's time for you to get to know another member of this year's freshman class. Here's a conversation with Shane Gersich. Shane, good to be with you. Yep, thanks for having How's me. your transition going here to UND? Oh, uh, it's been great. I obviously uh, being here in the summer, uh, getting to know all the guys is was was huge for us. And then uh, you know, kind of starting school now and getting into the practice routine, it's been uh, yeah. it's been great so far. What are the dynamics like with this big of a freshman class? Yeah, I think uh, obviously the older leadership is huge. Uh, 
I think everyone knows there's a lot of captains this year, and I think that's because of uh, so many kids coming in. So uh, they've done a great job so far, and I'm sure they'll uh, continue to. And you must feel some sense of responsibility immediately because your class will have an impact this season one way or another. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, there's, there's some spots to fill uh, a lot of guys left. So, uh, you know, we got to come in and try to do our best to contribute to the team right away. Yeah. So. All right, Shane, uh, the U.S. National Development Program a couple of years ago, the Omaha Lancers last year in the USHL. Uh, what have you seen from your development here the last couple of years? Yeah, it's been great. I think uh, obviously going to the U.S. Uh, program was uh, big for me. I learned a lot. We had a lot of good kids on that team, so uh, that was a big year in far, as far as learning for me. And then uh, last year uh, going to Omaha, kind of being the uh, go-to guy, and uh, it was a good year for not only me, but the team, so. You were more of a scorer last year. Yeah. Your scoring think, increased. Yeah, I think that was just came with having a bigger role, so it was, it was a good year. For those uh, that may not be aware of your bloodline, your uncles are Neil Broughton, Aaron Broughton, and Paul Broughton. Yeah. All, of course, played collegiately at the University of Minnesota. Yeah. What do you remember first about the reaction of your family when you sprung the news that you would be attending UND? Yeah, I think, uh, honestly, they they pretty much left it up to me. I think they knew sure. uh, I was visiting here and stuff like that, and uh, they were great about it. Uh, I mean, throughout the whole process, they kind of left, left it up to me, and uh, they didn't really say too much about it. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, I think I got my, my grandpa a Sioux shirt that Christmas. But, uh, besides that, no <laughs> Soften them up a little yeah, bit? Yeah, yeah. Your expectations for this freshman season for you personally? Uh, I think just coming in and trying to work hard every day. I think that's what the coaches want to see and uh, as far as uh, me I think just trying to contribute as much as I can every game and uh, you know help the team win. I'm sure you're excited for the rivalry to resume not this season but next season. Yeah I think uh, growing up I think I mean I would always wear a Sioux hat to the Gopher games and stuff like that but uh, yeah as far as a year from now I think there'll be you know a game you circle on your calendar. Yeah. So What can you bring to the team this year? Uh, I think I just try to use uh, my speed as much as I can, cause turnovers, uh, try to create uh, for the team, and uh, just try to work hard and compete every shift. Mm -hmm. All right, Shane, good chatting with you. Good luck this year. Awesome, thank you. That's forward Shane Gersich. Brad, uh, where do you see Shane Gersich this year in terms of his development steps as a freshman? Well, first of all, he came in from the USHL, which is a, a great ground for uh, uh, players playing D1 hockey as far as proving their, their skill level down there. You know, he put up some good numbers in Omaha. Uh, what resembles a, a good player is a guy that can play with the puck and without the puck. His, his attributes, he has blazing speed. He can push defense back, which creates opportunity for the rest of his forward line. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and again, learning our structure is, is key right now as far as the way we play without the puck. How's his two-way game? Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, good. You know what? He competes ultra high. So when, like I said, when he has the puck, he's going to the net and he's creating offense. When he doesn't have the puck, he's, uh, he's coming back and he's working hard. Well, you've had your warm-up, so to speak, for the season. Now the real deal begins. We'll preview the Icebreaker Invitational next. North Dakota Hockey with Brad Berry on Midco Sports Network is presented by RydellCars.com. Sue Shop at Ralph Ingolstadt Arena and Hot Spring Spas and Pool Tables too. Welcome back. UND opens the regular season this Friday and Saturday in Portland, Maine at the Icebreaker Invitational. It's Lake Superior State on Friday night and then host Maine on Saturday. Brad, let's talk about this coming weekend from your team's perspective. What are some of your emphasis points coming into this week? Well, I think consistency. I think we want to get into our game plan right away of playing fast and competing hard again. Again, uh, you know, we've had some familiarity as far as how we want to play. Uh, we've had some forward lines and, and some deep pairings that have played together for a little bit now. We want a little bit of consistency going forward so again we're going to try to build our game and again it starts with Lake Superior on Friday night. What did you think of Cam Johnson last weekend and then uh, for him moving forward this well, week? Well you know what again you know a lot of people have asked about Cam and I, I think you know obviously I know he's a good, good goaltender he didn't have a lot of action didn't have a lot of reps last year so again we need to build his game too. Carl Gehring has done a great job with him and again uh, it starts on Monday here so we, we're looking for a lot of things from Cam. You like a lot of your combinations with your forward lines that you saw last weekend? Yeah, we do. Uh, you know, we look at the tandems uh, together up front. I, I think Drake Kajul and Luke Johnson do very well together. Chris Wilkie is good good on that line. And then you look at uh, uh, Nick Schmaltz and Brock Besser, good tandem there. And then we will either have Joel Janatunin or uh, um, Shane Gersich on right. that line. So 
Well, Nick Schmaltz, with such a playmaker is, just seems like a perfect fit for a goal scorer like yeah. Brock Besser. Yeah, he is. Uh, you know, Nick's a distributor of the puck. He can, uh, he can move pucks in tight spaces. And Brock, he gets open for you all the time, so that's a good combination. All right, it's going to be fun. Here we go. The regular season, a couple of non-conference games to kick it off. We'll be in Portland, Maine this coming weekend. And, Coach, you and I will uh, review this coming weekend's games next week on the show and then look ahead to Bemidji State. Absolutely look forward to it. Good luck, Coach. That's it for this week. We'll see you next week on North Dakota Hockey with Brad Berry. It's quiet now, but that won't last. Places like this weren't built to be empty. When the lights come up and the clock starts, then this place this space, a carnival of sight and sound, mayhem and motion, elegance and emotion, coaches, athletes, teammates, united as one, competing for a chance at glory. And when glory has come, we will be there.